Hi, hello, and welcome to the last of these uh, this set of videos. Uh, these Scots language and accent, um, Scots person speech and grammar. Uh, but and we're going to have a look at the last two classes of person speech. We're going to have a look at prepositions and conjunctions in Scots. And now, <clears throat> a preposition is one of the wee words that tells you who something relates to something in space or time, uh, roughly. Um, so that's like the teas in the cup, um, or I'll see you after the party, that kind of thing. So that's this is another one of the um, kind of shop class groups. Roughly, tags on new words every now and again. But basically it's a shut class, so what we're going to do is just go through them all. Often they'll kind of match up in some way to uh, Stoner English, but other times it, there's no equivalent, and uh, other times I know um, the Scots one behaves awfully different from uh, what you'll find in Stoner English. So what we'll do is we'll just go through them, there's, there's about a hundred of them or something like that, we'll go through them, and then we'll have you look at the conjunctions and then we'll wrap up the thing that's been uh, in this set of videos. So cheers. Let's go. So there we go, a preposition, a word that expresses a relation between things. <clears throat> now one of the things you'll notice here as we first look at this is most of these start with an A. Ah. So in Scots um, we don't have the B uh, part of the preposition, so before as in English. It's a for, between, a tween. So we've got that form there. So most of them will tag that form. And we'll cheer John, we'll just go through them all. <clears throat> so we've got a blow, which is down below in English. Um, a bird, which is a board, so you'll get a bird a boat or a bird a bus. Um, then we've got a boot. Uh, related to about in English. Um, we'll see that where a boots is it? Sometimes I'll take an S. Uh, where a boots is that thing? Um, then we've got a bin, which means off, <coughs> or a bean, and you'll see that a boon in some forms, I know. Um, then we've got aff, and aff is one of these ones that. Um, behave somewhat similar to English, but there's a few different usages here. it. So um, you could step off the bus, um, but you could also, if you're getting something from an English, so I got a letter or a postcard off my auntie, sometimes that's off of, so that's off of, a letter off of my auntie rather than from in English. Um, sometimes works on by, in English, we'll tack off, so I get, I get butt off a dog, right, so I get butt off a dog. Um, another usage of that is family usage, so you'll say, uh, she's off the Campbells, right, that kind of use there. Uh, I think that's most of them, um, but check your own language for how you use that. What we find with these prepositions is there's no way the same. In Scots and English, and you find that in different uh, across different languages, that prepositions in AI match up one to one in terms of how they're used. Um, so we've got this one, a four, so before in English, uh, a four you go, <clears throat> or a four you finish, can be used in all what the um, the cats are a four with fire uh, in front of. It's kind of used that way. Then we've got again and against. And most of the time, in terms of usage, they're a bit different to the English against. So, if there's a concept that you um, disagree with, you'll say, I'm again it. Um, if you're leaning up at something, then you're against it. So, that's, that's usually how that gets used uh, again and against it. Um, but it's not, it's not so liberal. <clears throat> what a lot of these. There's a lot of work kind of needing uh, done to find out the exact way that folk everybody that folk use all these uh, prepositions. So you'll maybe use them a wee bit different from what I'm saying here. 
Um, then you've got a heat. Um, somebody's uh, in the race, she's a heat of him. Um, a hen, uh, which is at, at the backy. So sometimes you get in a hen, it, it combines with that. So where's the remote for the telly? Or where's the remote? It's in a hen the telly, or it's in a hen the couch, something like that. So in a hen. Um, a lang. Kind of means dunes, you would say go along the road, that, that kind of uh, usage. Um, alongside, 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 and alongst. Uh, <clears throat> you could have your bike is alongst the wall, so it's leaning up against the wall, um, but it's kind of lang ways. Um, then you've got a mang and a mangst, they seem to be used kind of interchangeably. Um, I was in among the, the ferns. Uh, with the dog, uh, so are in amongst the firms. Um, then you've got aneath, so that's beneath in English. Um, it was underneath, uh, underneath, and underneath, you'll find that form and all. Um, anent means kind of regarding, so I'm writing to you, and then what we're going to do about Scots, right? That kind of thing. Uh, so anent regarding. <clears throat> then you've got a rune and a runst. Um, for me, a rune would always mean at the back. You go rune, uh, it's a rune there, or it's rune there, you get that form at all. A rune. If you said, Where have you been? Uh, you would say, Oh, I've been a boot. You wouldn't say a rune like around. Maybe you do in your, in, in your version of Scots and your dialect, but I, I would tend no way. Um, so it doesn't mean a boot, like just kind of generally a rune a boot. You would use it like that, I run a bit. Um, aside and asides, so that's uh, besides, put that. Uh, doing asides the, the arm of the couch, that kind of thing. Um, a sclent, <clears throat> this one is it's kind of funny to usage of it, but I, I get it. Um, a sclent is kind of diagonally opposite, for, so something's um, a four year, it's in front of you, a sclent is kind of over that way, or over that way. And you'll get that as um, what a, an adjective if you say something sclenty, like a picture, squinty or sclenty, you'll get that in there. Um, and you can use it an all for a verb, so uh, give that a sclent, it means have a look out the corner of your eye. So rather than turning your full heat, you can say, uh, take a sclent and that. It's in there. Um, a spite, this is despite, you'll find that in, in this, a spite form and it's, um, it's just following the pattern of, that, uh, of the rest of these. Um, and you've got at, which generally means the same as uh, it means in English. Um, comes into phrases like, she's at it, that kind of thing, I know. Um, but the, the cat's at its milk, so the cat is drinking its milk, you'll get that kind of use, I know. <clears throat> then you've got a tap. Which is own tappy. Um, the the ash it's a tap the fridge, right? So you get the ash up in the fridge, it's it's up there, it's a tap, it's sitting in tapia. Um then you've got a thin and a thin, and that's uh, that's within, I guess. It's an insider. So a thin and a thin, you've got that. Then a thut, that means uh, with it, no having. Um, both of forms have got within, within, and without. So uh, they've got the forms I know. But a thin and a thut. So again, that's kind of following this A pattern. It's just kind of uh, merged with these words there. And so a thut, I was, would mean no having. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't really mean um, outside. So a thut, it just means it doesn't have that. Um, a thought means a crossfit. And you tend to say that if you're crossing some distance or, or a barrier, like a thought the road, a uh, thought the burn on the other side of that, or a thought a thought the glen, something far away. Um, then you've got a tower, a tour, so that's kind of above there. Yeah. Uh, then you've got a tween, a twish, and a twixt, and that means in a tween something. So um, there you go, it gets used in a tween. So. A tween, a twixt, and a twish. So in English, you've got betwixt and between. Um, you would say I'm swithering a tween to all things. 
uh, that kind of thing. There. Then you've got a yont, which is kind of beyond, so it's really far away, and it's, it's related to yon and don, <clears throat> something that's halfway far away. So um, you'd say a yont the shire, so outside the shire, that kind of thing. Um, you get it in a dams, like that's how you went my ken, so that's outside of my knowledge, that kind of thing. That's how you went my ken. Um, so that's our ones. Then you've got uh, boring, boring. So I'll see you next week, boring, any unexpected events. Um, then you've got beasts, which means kind of besides, or asides, but I've only heard it um, used in an argument, uh, sorry, like a, a thought. Um, so rather than a, a row or whatever, um, an argument. So I would go to the, I'm not going to have party, I've got to work. Beasts, we had a phone out last week, right? So it's besides the fact uh, we, had a, we had a phone out last week. Then we've got um, Ben, so a wee Ben in the room. Uh, Moan Ben, um, so that means to come towards the insides or something. Um, so to move towards the, the inner part of house or towards me. I went away Ben means come to us. Um, that kind of thing. Um, and then we've got by, which has got, a, it's got two different pronunciations. You've got bay, so if, this is a book that was wrote by Michael Dempster. Um, you would use the bay form. By, another one, uh, it means Merla in English, uh, past. So if this was a Kirk and I says, I'll meet you by, by the Kirk and you're here, we're here. I would tend to think here, so past it, but in English it would tend to be there. So if he says, where's my ball? And he says, it's by the Kirk. I would, you would, in Scotch, you would kind of tend to think it's there rather than right there, it's, it's next, next there. Um, and you use that, it means away as well. So, um, where's my book? Oh, I put it by. So you put something by. And another usage here would be, um, I'm here to watch the flipper. Oh, it's by, you've missed it. So it means it's, it's past. So it's used quite different. Uh, that you, and it can cause a wee bit of confusion if you're uh, aiming to meet somebody um, by the tune or something like that, by the post box. And they wait aside it and you're away down the road. Um, so, get that. Um, then there's sept and septna, which mean except and except not um, in English. This form exists in, in the written form quite, uh, going, going quite far back, so it's, 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 um, it is there. Then we've got uh, dun, dun the ways, um, the opposite of up the ways, uh, dun the ways. Um, then you've got dun by, and that means kind of away, down in a direction, and near that kind of area. So you're still working down by, that kind of thing. Then you've got during, uh, which is like during. So uh, during the film, uh, I had to go and get my uh, sweeties, something like that. Um, then we've got after, which means after. Um, say what you after, I know, uh, that, that kind of form, or I'll see you after. So it doesn't I require um, something that it refers to, right? So you can just say, I'll see you after. So it works a wee bit more like afterwards in English, I know, so it does it kind of work out like that. So I'll see, see you after. Um, then you get fae and fray, uh, that, that form there. Fae tends to be used all your, um, but fray might be part of your speech. So it's in there. Where do you fae? Um, where do you fee? So I think that um, you would sometimes use that, like I get a bit for a dog, that kind of thing. Um, and sometimes get used in that way. Um, then you get foley in. Um, so something something happens and foley in that, something else happens. Uh, four, uh, what did you do that for? And this is the one that um, I tend to spell F-I-R because fur tends to um, reflect my speech, but most of the time that's an unemphasized vowel, so it can be fur or fur, 
or four, so you'll find the, the difference behind you. Um, <clears throat> for by is another you know like beast and aside. It means aside the fact. So um, I'll use that same example. Um, I was I'm not going to a party because I'm working. Uh, for by be there was a wee stream match last week, so I'm not doing that kind of thing. Um, so for by you'll see that getting used uh, quite a lot in written Scots uh, folk like that preposition. Um, then this is the last of them here. Um, so you've got fernent, which means kind of in front of, and then gain. So uh, gain the fact, um, you would have that, that's relatively the same as given in, in English. Um, <coughs> then you've got in, so incisor. Um, in by, that would be if, say, you were in the garden and you say, so we in by, and that would be in the front door. Um, <clears throat> and then run about the, the front here. Um, including, uh, la largely the same as English. Um, and you've got an hour, um, which would be kind of over a threshold, so an hour the doorstep, that kind of thing, um, an hour the law, so you're, you're crossing something that's kind of like that. Um, inside and insides, put that insides that. Um, Right, so that that's relatively straightforward. Then these next the next pair into and until. So t and till. We'll we'll revisit in a wee second. But till can take the meaning of two in English. So I give it till him. So if you put something put put the milk into the tea, you can say put the milk until the tea. I know. So it doesn't it mean until? Like in English, and we'll uh, we'll see that in a wee sec. That again. Um, then you've got like or lick, lick, and it tends to be I be used in here. So uh, don't do it like that. Do it like this. So in this way. So it tends to be in this form. And it's got the glottal stop. I know. So focal maybe think L I T will be the spelling for that. But do it like that because the key goes to. A global stop. <clears throat> then there's some of these that have came from Latin. We've got uh, minus. So she gave us a dolly minus its heat, that kind of thing. So using that. Then you've got near, which would mean asides. I guess in uh, adverbs that gets that's that kind of means almost. Uh, so okay, a near fainter, that kind of thing. Um, that's the same sound, that's a hominem, that's no, no the preposition. Then you've got nest or next, N-I-X-T, sometimes it's spelled that way. Um, and I guess near works like this, I know. Um, near to the wall, next to the wall. Um, they, this pair, they'll not take the, the T, the T, it doesn't have T in Scots. So you say the cat's next the wall, the cat's next the wall, the cat's near the wall. It's not near to, so it's near. So I'll tend to, tend to that form. We've got no with stoning, used the same as notwithstanding in English. And then we've got this, in the plain O, so this is of in English. In Scots, this is pretty much A pronounced A, A or O, and that it kind of takes the form. It's never really O. So if you're singing and you encounter that uh, as a written word, one o oh, them, it's it's not really said like that. It's one of them, um, one of them, and what else is, is going to go on with that? So um, oh, aye. So that's 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 roughly like that. Uh, then you've got own. Um, doesn't he, I mean on tapa the same as as English? Um, so you can say things like, uh, look at the heat on that, right? So uh, it, it has a very an attachment thing. Look at the bones on him, that kind of thing. Uh, so, so it's got that additional additional meaning there. Uh, onte, so you put it onte, that's mere and tapa, put it onte. So it's a wee bit different for on. Um, then you've got hour or hour, which means 
over in English. Um, one of the things with this is that the English word T double O, meaning uh, kind of very. Uh, in Scotch, you tend to use hour for that, so you're too late, so you're too late, that kind of thing. Um, if you're talking about as well in English, you know, we did that too, then you would use we did that to, but you wouldn't say it's too late, it's it's hour late, that, that's a kind of hour late, that kind of word. Air in, in Glasgow, um, it's air there, that kind of thing. Uh, then you've got out, um, and after that, I'll be out uh, so the, the milk came out of the curtain, that kind of thing. There. Um, then we've got out by, a few different outs here, quite a few of them. Uh, out by, so if you're in the house, uh, where's the spade? Oh, it's out by, so you can it's out the front door and, and kind of near about. Uh, out over is going over a threshold out the way. Um, outside and outside, so that would tend to mean, um, rather than use it as a noun to mean the great outdoors, that kind of thing, um, it means outside, everything, everything, I own, um, a kind of boundary. And that's no the same as out with uh, or out with. And, and this is one of the words out with uh, that folk uh, get corrected when they're using standard English because it doesn't exist in English. And it's, it seems awfully important if, it, if you've got it. Uh, so what that tends to mean is if you've got some kind of bounded thing like time, right? So there's only 24 hours in a day. And you could say out with uh, 10 o'clock to 3 in the afternoon, the shop's shut. Right, so out with these hours. So that's it's, it's like in a fixed amount of things. So if you said um, out with Glasgow, uh, folk say Denny, folk say Ken, out with Glasgow. Um, then that would you would assume for that that you would you'd be talking about Scotland. You're not talking about everybody in the world or everybody in the universe. And outside's kind of unbounded like that. So outside isn't quite out with. Um, then we've got or, which is largely the same. Past tend to use by for that. Um, I went. I, I walked by him. Uh, I went by the Kirk. That kind of thing. Um, then you get penning, which is pending. So penning, you're a penning an approval. Uh, I'll have the holiday next uh, week, next Monday. You get pair as per usual. Then regarding and respecting, uh, regarding and expecting. Um, then you get ruin. So away ruin the back. So that's kind of like a ruin the back. Away ruin. Away ruin there. Uh, You've got saving or the older form soften. So uh, saving the rain doesn't come on, well, uh, go gaufen, right? That kind of thing. And you've got sin or sign. Um, so uh, that's like old lang sign. That's, that's the one that comes in there, that, that kind of usage. Um, it can mean then, so it kind of means after. Um, so I went. My messages sign I can mean that kind of thing. That, that would be the usage of that. Uh, one usage of that. And you've got T, and this is T and till. So you said I get it to him. Other folk will say I get it till him. It's it's that they can be kind of interchangeable. That that kind of thing. Um, you've got then, um, which here kind of means then. Um, I done that. Then I done that. Um, we've got that. Then you've got through, uh, so I went through the windy, through it would be all through the house, uh, it was smelling nice because uh, of that new air freshener, something like that. Uh, till and till, I gave it till him, so it works like that. Then you've got to what and to what's, um, so I, I walked to what him, yeah, I, I went in the direction that he is. Then you've got unlike, unlike or unlike, so I didn't do it much unlike that. 
right? So that's a manner and what you're doing it. Then you've got unner, uh, so unner or underneath in there. Then until or until, so I tend to say until, sit there until, until you're finished your dinner or until you're finished your dinner. Do that until you're finished the dinner. And you can remove the un from that. So do that until you've finished your dinner. Uh, so it's no quite the same as uh, the English to, if you've got that. Do that until you've finished your dinner. Then you've got up, up the ways, um, up by. It's kind of the same as down by. One of these things where places are up or down, but it doesn't really matter all that much. Um, villages or in a bit where I come from, some folk go up to Glasgow, some folk go down to Glasgow. It's all the same direction. Um, do you work up by or down by? Um, then you've got up on, up on, up with, up way. Uh, verses, and I've got a couple of Latin ones, that one versus this one. Um, I went via the post office. Uh, wanting as uh, and the preposition here, wanting means no having something that you should have. So I went out wanting a hat and here it's raining. So that doesn't mean I went out looking to buy a hat. It meant I went out without my hat and the rains came on and I'm getting wet now. So he's out wanting a hat. It doesn't mean you're out looking for a hat. Um, so that's a, the use of that, wanting. And you've got way. Some folk will spell it way, that's, that's, so it's with in, in English, way. Um, mostly that's the same, I think. Then you've got way in and way out. So we touched on that for a thin and a thud. I would tend to say a thin and a thud. Um, so Aye, that's, that's the meanings of them. So that's that's most of the prepositions. So that, that'll tell you how things, I think it's just about all of them, it tells you how things relate to one another. Um, so your, your nouns, how they relate to one another, your verbs, uh, they assist them. So that's that's most of them. And you'll find that uh, most folk um, in Scots will use them because they're one of these short class words and you can't really point at uh, out or you can't really point it up. You can point in the direction up, but up itself. So these are kind of connections that arrange relationships between things. Um, so these uh, tend to persist in languages and, and the usage of them. Now, I'll just say the new, the, the genuine way we, uh, verbs as particles. So you can say things like, uh, when will you turn up? Or wait on, which is one that's kind of funny in Scots. So, if you said, I'm waiting in my totties, um, in English that would tend to mean you're a waiter and you're waiting or you're, you're providing a meal for your totties. Uh, it'd be wait for, I'm waiting for my totties to bail, that kind of thing. So I'm waiting on. Um, but there's quite a lot of them uh, in terms of how they work, how they join up with uh, verbs as particles. So uh, particles, keep an eye out for them, keep an eye out, there you go. Uh, uh, that usage there. So that's that's for prepositions, we've got them. And now we're going to go into the, the last class of words, and that is the conjunctions. And these are the words that Jane have written together. So now we've got two classes of these. They can join together words or phrases or even false sentences, right? So um, you can join them together like that. So. We've got coordinating conjunctions, and that's where things are mostly kind of independent of one another, each each bit. Um, so she's muckle and strang. You could have she's muckle and she's strang. So yeah, that's you uh, joining together uh, two false sentences, or nouns would just be uh, she's muckle and strang. You're just joining them the uh, the adjectives together um, in that case. Um, so, are you wanting this yin or that yin? So that's or um, there. But or but, um, I'm puggle but glad still. So um, that's that's how that's used. So I'm pug puggle but I'm glad still. Um, forget that. So or 
or nor in English tends to be and, it'll take the and form. So they wouldn't let us in and they wouldn't tell us how, right? Uh, in English, they wouldn't let let us in, nor would they tell us why, right? Not that kind of form there. So they wouldn't let us in, they wouldn't tell us who. Um, say comes in there, he went to the shops, say I went to the fitler, right? Um, so that's say. So they are, they're kind of relatively independent then. Um, here's another one at the door. I paid in, yet they didn't even make my own. So that's yet. So that's the coordinating conjunctions. That's roughly missed them. Um, they all get phrases uh, put together to do that job, but just the basic works is there. And then we've got the subordinating conjunctions. So that means you've got an independent sentence or phrase, and then you've got a phrase that is dependent on that first unit. So the best way to do that is just go through examples here. So you've got after. So I ate my soup after I had it up. Right, so I hate it up as dependent on you understanding that I am a soup. Um, hope all these examples have that dependency within them, they, they should. Um, so I like that the fence before the bowl came down, right? And you can put these at the start of sentences, we'll see that a wee bit. It doesn't have to be in between uh, these two phrases or clauses or uh, whatever. Um, so sign, so Geese on painting, sing your flitting, or since, sing your flitting. Um, so, geese your painting, sing your flitting. Um, then you've got te, wait there, te, I'll come back for you. So that's te, that's in there. Um, Juan, I started dancing when my best sign came on. So that's a dependent bit. Um, then you've got while, she painted the woodwork whilst he stripped it for her. So he's strutting the woodwork and she's painting it. Then you've got a cause. Um, I learned folk Scots a cause. It's important, right? Pretty simple one, that one. Um, I've been glad Faye he left. So that's like since in English. I've been glad Faye left. So that we've got that there. Then since and all, uh, we've got uh, get us a pie, seeing you're going to the shop. So that's a seeing use of that. Um, here's one at the start of the sentence, so that now that you can mayor about your Scots, use it, right? So that's the dependent bit there, that's the independent bit. Uh, go in there, and then you've got as, as you've been affigated. Then say that, or say, or say that. Uh, so here are bism, say that you can sweep the carpet. Um, got that in there, then we've got though, which means I'll go in English. So uh, I went a merch though it was smarried. Um, so I went for a merch though it was smarried. Um, a spite versus despite. This is another one with a D has kind of became an A sound. Um, so a spite at all, we I prevail. That, that kind of usage of that. Um, then you get whether. Um, we'll laugh whether you like it or not. There we go. Simple in there. Um, nor tends to be used, that's more like than. Uh, it tends to be mostly written, uh, the usage of that, nor. But there is some dialects that's got that. So, um, love is better than war, right? Simple one, that. Uh, binna kind of means unless. Um, so I can go home, binna, you'd rather I didn't. Um, so that's kind of like be not the case, that uh, binna. Um, then there's two versions of if in Scots, um, and you'll see this a lot in uh, writing and signs and things like that, um, less so in the spoken sense. So, gif tends to be if there is a, an absolute causal relationship between things. So, gif there more than four ton in the truck, it'll break, right? So, you could put that the other way. The truck will break if there's more, what, more than four ton on it, right? So that's that's something that's going to happen, right? That's it. Gin is more a kind of hypothetical um, kind of thing. So can you get to the shop, get us a cake of chocolate, eh? So that's, um, should it be the case, or gain the case that you go to the shop, 
gin. That's a kind of relationship, gin and gear. So gin you get into the shop, uh, get us a cake of chocolate. Uh, so should it be the case that you go to the shop, could you get me a cake of chocolate versus um, absolutely if you put four ton on that truck, it's going to break. Right, you've got that. And then you've got four. four uh, so it's coming yet for all that. You'll hear that in, in science. So that's that's you know, usage of that. Usage of that. So I think that's as mostly, uh, oh, we've got the correlative conjunctions here. So these are the ones uh, that have got, there's more than two words. So this is either or, so either tag tent or it's tent. And uh, then you get neither and nor in English, but in Scots that's generally neither and nor. So they're neither anything bad or anything wrong about my language. Um, got that there, so that's a pretty clear one there. Baith and an, we get Scots is baith new and alive, right? So it's 11, 11 things. So it's baith, new and alive. Then you've got Wesney, but. Um, it wasn't a law, but just in the house. So Scots wasn't a law, but just in the house. So there we go, wasn't but. And then in English, you've got this, not only, but also, but usually in Scots, it's no just, but something and all. So Scots is no just inter interesting, but it's ours and all. So there we go, I'll finish with that one. So that's, that's our last example. And that's, that's us, uh, come to the end of all of these. So we've we've been through um, a fair amount on on these courses here, uh, on, on a, all these videos. So we've looked at how Scots is kind of differently conceptualised and who it is a full functioning uh, language system there, how it's legally recognised as a language and how we all use it a bit different. How we've got that Scots standard English that's shifted all the kind of sounds of Scots in order to be best understood uh, be uh, English speakers, so it's like English with a Scots accent. So that's a kind of compromise between everybody speaking uh, standard English using the sound system of uh, English as well. It's uh, a wee bit rotten that accent. Um, that's how we we don't talk like that. That's how we don't talk like that. So we looked at that. Then we looked at all the sounds of Scots, uh, all the consonants and vowels that we've got. Uh, that mark up the language, so we've got that. And then we went below that and uh, kind of into the rhythms and all the weak kind of totally features and Scots that really matter for poetry and singing in your Scots accent, whether you're singing in Stone or English, whether you're singing in Scots. You could use that to sing in French or Cantonese or whatever. You can talk any language with that sound system that comes with Scots and um, you can use that. So we looked at that. And then we went through the parts of speech and various kind of uh, various kind of features of the of the grammar as Scots in association with the parts of speech question formation. Uh, so we went through the the nouns. So you can talk about things, individual things. Nouns is open class. There's thousands upon thousands of them. I went and looked at the dictionary and found out more of them. Uh, talk to other folk and pick up Scots Scots words. And maybe try using ones that you've you've not used before. Often we've got this culture where we'll take on English words, but we'll not take on Scots words. So folk will um, they'll say things like I don't know if it, textbooks as you're learning stuff. You'll talk about um, exocentric or uh, subaltern, or we'll take in these words, kyriarchy, or these these kind of words. But somebody from Glasgow would never say Ken, right? Even though they can, what Ken means. So you can travel another way. You can say, right, well, I'm not doing Stone in English. I can take it in these words for Scots. I know I'm doing Scots now. That's as well. I'm doing here. I'm just talking normal and I can expand my vocabulary that way. Now, whether you're going back in time and across the dialects, um, as McDermott would have you, um, that's up to yourself. Um, I'd say talk across dialects and realise that folk for different bits of Scotland actually has the same nouns, the same verbs as you. There's maybe a wee difference in pronunciation. But um, 
it's worth doing rather than talking property one, one another because you think you'll not be understood. Um, so we've got that, we've got the nouns, we've got the determiners that allow you to talk about the specific examples of that thing. So nouns generally class things unless they're proper nouns. The determiners allow you to hone in on what one you're talking about. And then we've got the pronouns, and that allows you to replace that so you can talk more quicker, uh, more quickly. And, and that. Um, and then we looked at the adjectives, which allow you to expand and describe the nouns that you're using. And then we, after that, we take a look at the verbs. So the verbs um, are about the actions. And we find that you've got uh, your kind of auxiliary verbs and your modal verbs. These kind of helper verbs that allow us to place things in different times and different moods. So things that you have today, things that you know men today, uh, things that are advisable today, all this kind of thing. So that, that allowed us to see these helper verbs and they've got the negative forms, can he, have he, will he, all that kind of thing, and all. And then we get adverbs that allow us to talk more about the verbs, the way you do things, and talk about false sentences, or change, change things about. So verbs and adverbs, again, there's thousands upon thousands of Scots words you can go out and, and search for them, and we can take in new words for other languages. And then we finished off there with the prepositions, and that tells us how to orient, orient Take things together, so how, how things join and act in one another, the prepositions for that. And we finished off with, uh, uh, with the conjunctions, and the conjunctions tells you how to put it all together so you can build bigger sentences. So that's, that's the kind of basics, um, uh, everything that's going on within this language system. So I really hope that um, it, it describes how you talk, you, you know, it, it gives, gives you a bit of insight into how you talk. So it's kind of up to, up to yourself now what you do with it. Um, part of what we're doing here, we understand it as literacy, right? So we've no been writing stuff down, but I would say write it down. That's only part of literacy. A big part of literacy is understanding it. And if you fully do so, if you take, uh, if you download the slides and the, the honour that, that, that I'm getting away, um, hopefully you can look at it and eventually get your head on it. Now that knowledge that you're taking on or so in Scots, you can take that and you can apply it to just about any language. And part of the things about, one of the things about talking Scots and then speaking properly, speaking standard English and comprehending in standard English is that that gives you a lot of knowledge about how language works, just intuitive knowledge. And what I've ho hopefully given to you here as the kind of tools to talk about how this intuitive knowledge that you've got in your, uh, in your head about how Scots works. So it's up to yourself, what, what do you do with that writing? You know, you, you can put a tweet, you can write a poem, you can write a masterpiece, go for a full opera. It's fit for everything. Um, ask yourself, do you, want, do you want a council tax letter rather than a council tax letter? Um, do you want maths books wrote in Scots in two or three four or, or that form and there are not. It's it's fit for everything. Um, all these wee things we've looked at here, the modal verbs, the prepositions and all that, that's that's all part of logic, that's all part of thinking, right? But uh, we've also got a closer relationship with this this language. So it's all kind of the language of the hair, if you want to go with that. It's a language of the heat and all. So it's fit for for whatever you want to do with it. Um, particularly important if you're a singer or a rhymer or somebody that works, uh, a rapper, uh, an actor, if, if you're somebody that actually works with these students as part of your job, if you're a talker or a presenter or something like that, particularly important this, this knowledge and I really hope that kind of uh, gives you a horn with it. Um, but even if you're just thinking about things or making up things, I hope that, that's kind of helped. Uh, in terms of writing, it's important to get it out there. Um, your, your imagination matters, you know, your thoughts matter, your voice, your voice matters. So hopefully this is describing your voice and it's getting to you and you can actually understand that I, my voice matters. So I hope you've enjoyed all this. Um, what I would say is download this, the, the stuff 
that have um, uh, the, the bonnet and the slides and all that. I'm giving it away, you'll see, uh, with a copy, copy uh, right, with attribution. So what that means is you can do what you want with it as long as you attribute it to me. If you're going to make it into resources for teaching or activity packs and things like that. So I'm, I'm giving it away like that. Just uh, give, give a mention whenever you're doing it and we're am uh, I happy to collaborate with folk on development stuff and all. Um, so that's it there. And the main thing I would say is in Scotland there's a couple of million folk that this describes the way that we talk, our voice, our language. Pass it on to them and I was mind your voice matters. Thanks a lot, Paul.